La Forêt lies to the south of Paris, just to the west of Fontainebleau. It's a fascinating area that's rich with the artistic history of France. This was a part of the world that has long attracted artists for the beauty of nature there and the charm of its style. Artists gathered in Barbizon, the village just next to the famous Fontainebleau forest and castle, and many of the artists from those days lived nearby. Pioneering is not what naturally springs to mind with the thought of artists, but the mid-19th century painters forged new frontiers in natural preservation. Gustave Corbet led the campaign to save the forest at Fontainebleau. Concerned because of the increased traffic and exploitation of the forest, the artists took up their brushes. Among the rocks and trees, they painted in plein air for the first time the woodland scenes as the primary subject matter rather than just a backdrop for a portrait. With their brushes, they made their case to Napoleon III in the form of their exquisite visual artistry. Alfred Sisley, for example, lived in moray sur long and often used those scenes in that town, especially the River Luang, as the subjects for his painting. Theodore Rousseau, Frédéric Brazil, Jules Dupré, Jean-Baptiste Camille-Corot, and Sisley, Napoleon III granted the petition of these artists to make Fontainebleau the first national forest in the world. Later, Claude Monet's meeting with fellow artists in the exquisite landscapes in this area inspired him to purchase property west of Paris, now known as Giverny, where he created his own sublime gardens to use as a subject matter for his paintings. Barbizon still holds the memories from those days in its buildings and its ways. The Maison des Artistes exerts a quiet but prominent place in the town. The local inn elegantly exhibits the works of those who stayed there, a lovely barter that still benefits lodgers and diners alike. Mi le Forêt, this little town nearby, has its own story, and that story begins in Gaul. Mi was known in Gaelic times as the Domaine de Moriac. More recently, in the 7th century, Dagobert, a Merovingian leader, lived there. And then in the 19th century, Napoleon Bonaparte lived there, and in the 20th, Christian Dior and artist Jean Cocteau. Jean Cocteau's house and garden in Mille la Forêt are now a museum that is open to the public. Following his death in 1963, he was buried in the 13th century chapel there, which is also significant because of his contributions to it. In a bow to Millet's famous production that carries forward even today, Jean Cocteau decorated the interior walls of the building with giant medicinal plants. To this day, Millet is still known as a center for medicinal plants, still has a flourishing business in medicinal plants and culinary plants as well. The epitaph on J.C.'s tomb reads, Je reste avec vous. The village of Mille de la Forêt itself feels like a medieval open air museum. At the heart of the town, the ancient public marketplace recalls pavilions of old as described in heroic epics, centuries old public laundry, dovecote, and 1,300-year-old gates in the wall that used to lead to an abbey harken back to an illustrious past. Now, as of 1999, Milly has become a part of the Parc Naturel Régional de Gatineau Francais. This is a place in Europe where you can put yourself in the circumstances that so many have enjoyed for so many hundreds of years, and you can find insights into the past here that are very vibrant and exciting. We wish you all the best.